Welcome to Let's Get Writing. I'm Katherine Taylor. Let's Get Writing is all about the writing process from creation to publication. Here is where you find inspiration, ideas, and meet the people behind the stories. We bring life to books and so much more. Now, my guest today was born and raised in Arnold's Cove, Placentia Bay. Reciting and telling stories have always been a core element of his upbringing, and as it is so often around the Bay and in the kitchens all over Newfoundland. In his younger years, he was never shy of a joke or a story or a recitation at a family function or kitchen party. Boy, I wish I had been there for all of those stories. Now he has grown into an accomplished entertainer and is part of the popular from stage to stage group, as well as the Liars Bench Show. And most important, and what brings him here to me, he has just published his first book with Flankers Press called Don't Be Talking. However, we are going to be talking. <laughs> we're going to be talking a lot. and We're going to be talking to Harry Ingram. And I'm just going to bring him right up on the screen here. And Harry, hi, welcome to Let's Get Writing. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm quite pleased to be doing this with you today. Oh my goodness, and am I ever pleased because I love nothing more than good stories and recitations. And I have been, actually I have a copy of your book here. I've been enjoying this Don't Be Talking and uh, watching some of your material on YouTube and having a few laughs along the way. <laughs> and good so, stuff. you know, good stuff is right. So don't be talking, Harry, but today I want you talking and talking lots. We want to know all about you. So let's just start a little bit with going back to what knit you, <laughs> because in your bio it says that you were telling stories from a young age. So what prompted you to do that? <laughs> well, I suppose... Uh, I, I guess a simple answer would be jealousy. Uh, oh. that, that might sound a little odd, but uh, friends of mine were all musicians, and there was always kitchen parties and and shed parties and and all that kind of th fun stuff. And uh, I, at the time, I didn't play an instrument, uh, so I uh, I wanted to do my part. So uh, I, I always enjoyed the, the foolish recitations and stories and stuff you'd hear on the radio. So I decided to learn a few and. Well, I started performing and it started to become a little bit popular amongst our little circle of friends at Arnold's Cove. So uh, I really enjoyed that that aspect of things. Well, there you are now and you're, you're bringing it to more and more people. I and mean, it's so funny because when you think of Newfoundland and we're both Newfoundlanders and we get our culture, we, we know what it's all about. And when people talk about Newfoundlanders, they, I think they think of our sense of humor and the crazy things we do in our kitchen parties. And so basically you're one of the reasons for that. <laughs> the, the, the reason the reason is fun. <laughs> yeah, everyone likes to have a good time. And and it's uh it's it's been it's been like that since the dawn of time. It um, has. Yeah, recitations are, are great and it's a good part of uh, a silly little rhyme, uh, you know, can can go a long way sometimes, you know. You know, Harry, I was trying to educate myself on a bit, uh, on it a bit, and figure out like with these recitations. I mean, I know now that you you write them, but before that, you would just find them and learn to do them. Um, like, where did you get the material? Was it all oral, word of mouth, or where did it come from? Well, a bit, a bit of history, I guess, on, on recitations too, if you don't mind me backing up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, what from, from my point of view in, in Placentia Bay, it used to be kind of a, a thing that fishermen would do on their stages, you know. After coming in with a load of fish, they'd be cleaning their fish on their stage, and their buddy would be over a little ways cleaning his fish on his stage, and to help pass the time, they used to make up fun little stories, most times about each other, uh, to poke fun a little bit. And uh, and have a little laugh with a few rhymes here and there, and uh, and those things were were then graduated to the kitchen party and used there. Oh, tell Bill what John said about you yesterday morning. You know that kind of thing. And as uh, it turned into a lot of fun, and and actually it started to turn into an art from there. 
So that that's that's my history uh, from from what what where recitations came from. Now, when I started to learn them myself, I guess mostly from radio. Uh, growing up, um, just listening to the uh, ones from people around our area. Baxter Wareham was one of them. My my uncle actually uh, Mose Ingram. Uh, he uh, wrote and performed his own, and uh, so I picked up a couple of his. Uh, so that was fun. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that's that's mostly where I where I found them uh, from from that, and and of course going to a scattered party and hearing a few people perform them myself. The older people, you know, so. Oh, Harry, I mean, some of these are long <laughs> in your book. You know, they're a few pages long, and then you stand up there, and it's just coming out of your mouth, and you just go on and on. You know, is it is it hard for you to keep it all in there and keep it all in order? To keep it all in there? No, <laughs> not at all. To put it all in there, that's another story. Um, lots of practice, lots of rep repetition, lots of repeating in the shower. On long drives, just repeat, repeat, repeat until you get it in there. Once it's there, uh, I don't think it ever comes out. So yeah, maybe. Hmm. That's that's the idea. <laughs> oh, the joys of being your wife driving along listening <laughs> to, you, to you on a four-hour trip. <laughs> there you go. I actually could be entertaining it, but uh, maybe after the fourth or fifth time, not so much. <laughs> yeah, the words "shut up" come to mind. Uh, yes, well, you'll have to write a recitation about learning recitations. That might be kind of fun. Maybe a lot of, so. There's a lot of humor in your work, and as I was going through the book, and then there are some very moving pieces. You, you write stories as well as recitations, and it, it seems a lot, my sense is that a lot of this reflects pieces of your, your life or experiences you've had. Am I correct in saying that? Oh, absolutely. Uh, family is my biggest inspiration for, for all this work. Uh, well, for the, for the most part. Uh, the first piece that I wrote, uh, if you don't mind me speaking to it, uh, is uh, Hands of Time. Um, as you said, a, a nice sentimental piece. Um, I, I came up with that. I, I don't really know how. I'll, I'll be 100% honest. I don't know where it came from. I... Uh, it was after dad, but just after dad passed away about 10 years ago, I uh, went back to work. It was the day that I returned to work after uh, everything all settled down. And uh, I just sat down at the computer and I had a thought came in my head. And I said, I've, I've got to write this or if I don't write it, I'm going to forget it. So I popped open a little Word document and never told my boss, but started <laughs> typing. Uh, so uh, when it was done, after about 15 minutes, and I couldn't believe that those words just came out of me. And I said, mm, I kind of like that. I wonder if there's any more in there. So, <laughs> so uh, a few years later, I guess that yes, there's there certainly is more in there. So, so was that where it all started that day uh, when yeah. you went back? That's that was your first piece that you wrote. First piece I ever wrote, yeah. And yeah. I uh, I really liked it. I I thought it it turned out pretty good, and I got a good response from other people. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful piece. The sentiment in how you carry like. Kind of that thought of the hands of time, and you know, you, I think you're a sentimental guy I, to write that. Just the touches in it for sure, and um, but I think you're also a very funny guy. <laughs> you have a lot of uh, you have a lot of funny twists in your stories as well. What, one yeah. thing I, I wondered about recitations: like, is there a formula when something's an oral art? I mean, does anything go, whatever you want? Or does someone say, now, Harry, when you write these recitations, I got a rhyme on this line and that line. And what's what's a, what's the science behind it? Uh, to me, no, I don't think there's really a science. Um, if you've got a story to tell and it has a beginning, middle, and ending, uh, I think you're good. Uh, one of the guys in our, our group, um, Dave Penny, uh, the From Stage to Stage that, that you mentioned uh, before, uh, Dave wrote a lot of recitations, and he used to uh, recite them in our earlier shows. But then from that, it it just kind of uh, he just started singing them, and 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 it was like they are actually songs, but they're they're recitations that are sung. Is is basically what it is. So if you want to say anything goes, pretty much anything goes, as long as you've got a story with a beginning, middle, and ending, you're you're good. Most of them are in rhyme. Most I will say. 
uh, and most are not sung, but uh, but I guess there's exceptions, we'll say. We'll put it that way. Yeah, I guess whatever fits the mood at the time of the party or, you know, it, it could end up in song. <laughs> For sure. That's, that's the way these things happen in our kitchens. You never quite know where they're going to go, but they're always going to be a lot of fun and entertaining. So that you did answer one of my questions because I was thinking, well, is it poetry? And it, it is almost like a form of poetry too, but a, like a fun form. All right, so now we've talked about you. You grew up in Arnold's Cove. You got a lot of inspiration from there and from your family. And oh, I like that story. And is this one true where you had to go chop wood all the time when you were young on Saturdays? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Every Saturday morning across the pond with my dad every summer. Yeah. Oh, and they're old flat. Okay. And now that you bring up a flat, I had no idea what you were talking about. And you explained it. And so if there's anyone else out there that doesn't know what it is, can you explain it? <laughs> yes, I guess. And, and this this is the the harshest of language that you'll hear from me ever. Uh, okay. I, I'm not I'm, I'm I'm not like that. But anyway, um, no, I, I I simply put it in the book, and I'll put it in the same way. Uh, a flat is is the same color as a dory. It has the dory buff orange with the nice orange uh, with the nice green gunnels. But if you took that dory with the nice pointy ends on it, and you cut the air sand off it and bore it over. Uh, there you have what we call a flat. A flat. So okay, that's it. That's it, and that's where the engine just hooks on yeah. there, nice and neatly. At one of those. What do they call those engines that make Airport the four motor? Yeah. Yeah, but isn't there a different noise on those two stroke or something? They call them put putts or no? Okay, you the boss. <laughs> So that's a flat, and you used to be um, stirred from your sleep every Saturday morning to go across with your father and several times cut wood and bring it back across back to the house and stack it. Oh, yes. It wasn't just me. I was next in line. That's all. My older brothers had the same affliction before me. So. <laughs> I think you referred to it as child labor in your story. That's, that's what I thought it was back then, but... Actually, I think I think your father would have thought more it was making the man. Absolutely. Absolutely, and I think he was right. I think you all those things you absorbed and felt at that time have made who you who you are, but it's also made your writing um, who you are. So let's talk a little bit about your writing. Did you imagine a book? This is your first book. How did it come and about? I, and I can't stop smiling when when anyone says that. I really can't. I, I am, I am the most humble person in the world. I think, and and to go in, walk into Flanker Press. I've had a few recitations. A couple of my buddies had res, had uh, had books as well, and uh, we have a couple of CDs out uh, from stage to stage. And uh, someone said, "You need to get some merchandise on the table when we go do shows." I said, "Well, I don't know." And he said, "Well." How many recitations do you have? Why don't you get a book done? Well, I, I don't know. And so I went into Flanker Press, kind of, you know, um, here's what I have. And they looked at it, and they thought it was great, and said, yes, we do a book. And I've, I've been ecstatic ever since. It's, it's just great. I had no aspirations of a book when all this started. It was just, I want to write because I want to write. And if I could put a smile on someone's face or make someone feel a little, you know, sentimental and touched, well, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to enjoy doing that. So this is, I guess, a bit of a larger stage to do that. And mm. uh, it just makes me feel wonderful. I really do. Wow. And, you know, Flanker Press do so many. Um, I'm just going to bring up a picture of the cover of your book for people to there see. So they, they can recognize it. Don't be talking. And, um, you know, Flanker do offer so many Newfoundland writers um, the opportunity to express our culture. They're exceptionally, they're exceptionally gifted at that. And <laughs> tell us about this one. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, well, that's, that's something that I, you know, I, I, I almost got a tear in my eye when I look at that. Um, I, I came home the day the book was published. Actually, I, uh, they called me and said, your book is in. Do you want to come in and, and, and get a few copies and have a look? I said, absolutely. And I went in right away. Well, when I got home, uh, I was 
very excited a few people dropped by you know a uh, few uh of, of course inside the bubble now mind you uh here and there and uh and uh, then this they said oh we got a little surprise for you in the kitchen come on out now I, the, the kids of course i i have two girls uh yeah uh, 16 and 12 and uh and they said no dad you can't look you can't look so i i came out to the kitchen blindfolded and sat down to the table and then there it was and uh i tell you i i, I was about a a good solid minute i suppose before i could actually see it <laughs> i was so overwhelmed <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that that is so that's so nice, and I, I can almost see it now. It is a day I'll never forget. Um, I'll got to tell you how to take it. Um, my kids brought me into the kitchen, and there was my cake. <laughs> wow! So you got to make a recitation about that one, and I quite, quite possibly I may. Will it's a moving one, and here you are signing copies of those books. Yeah, that was the next day. I, I went in and they they presented me with a good five hundred or so books that I had to sign. It, uh, it 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 caused a little pain in my wrist, but uh, you know, other than that, it was great. Well, it the the name of the the book is "Don't Be Chalk," and that's a very familiar phrase here in Newfoundland, and we all know what it means. But we know what it means, but we don't actually. If someone said, "Explain that," you explain it. I can't, <laughs> but we know what it means. Like, don't be talking like it. Well, a term. I don't know what a term would be. Um, I know it might be a term of disbelief. I guess it's, it's kind of it's kind of the easiest way to put that. I guess I think so. Something that we just say, don't be talking like this is crazy. This is don't even be talking about it. Well, anyway, we are going to be talking about it because can you you have a recitation about. <laughs> this title of your book or the book is named after this recitation. Would you yes. be so kind as to share that with us um, on the yes, show? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I why don't... certainly did not, won't mind doing that. Um, <laughs> I'll maybe tell you a bit about where it came from first. Um, I guess everybody knows somebody uh, old and uh, maybe a little surly or, or something like that. or someone in everybody's life that that's relatable, I guess. Uh, for me, uh, I had some some uh, elderly relatives, plus I knew a few other people as well, and kind of gathered some thoughts and ways of these people and kind of put it together to make a fictitious uh, character, a great uncle. I'd done a little research to make sure I didn't have a great uncle, uh, and uh, and then I uh, I presented it to my one, my aunt, uh, who I read all my recitations to as soon as they're done because. I have a great relationship with her Aunt Ruby. She's wonderful. Anyway, so uh, when I read this to Aunt Ruby, I said, this is a new recitation I have. It's called, uh, it's about Great Uncle John. And I read it to her and she said, you're a Great Uncle John, but nothing like that. And I was like, oh, I didn't know I had a Great Uncle John. And she proceeded to tell me who he was. So anyway, it was all a bit of fun, but I kept the name because John don't rhyme with some things. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, without, without further ado, I will perform. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give you the full screen here. You take it away and don't be talking. Sure. Okay. Everyone knows one and that there's no doubt. Someone all negative. Yes, down in the mouth. I know one quite well. He's my great uncle John. But it's not for his wit or his charm I'm so fond. But crooked as sin, that's a way to describe him. Opinions he got, <laughs> they don't care if you like him. Yes, he's that friggin' crooked, I'll tell you right now, that if he died tomorrow, he'd be screwed in the ground. Well, I visited one day, was watching TV, leaves and heads, just he loves his hockey. Well, how's the game, Uncle John? I said with a smile and stopped and waited to hear his reply. Hockey, don't be talking. They should learn how to skate, and that ref should be shot, and I'm sure that my leaves won't make the playoffs. And I can't see the puck unless I'm wearing my glasses, and the TV's too small. Where's my bread and molasses? Well, he talked for five minutes about hockey and stuff till Aunt Sue's from the kitchen brought out his mogul. Well, I guess you're all right now with your tea and your lunch. I said to my uncle and he started to grunt. Grub, don't be talking. My son Grub around here is not fit to eat. Sure, a boiler of soup might have never bit of meat. And pea soup is worse because most times it's salty. And the broth's almost clear the dough balls is soggy. 
and Aunt Sue's makes them cakes like the one in the song, Trinity Cake. It'll paralyze your jaw. It's a job to get grub that's fit around here. Sure, the health science is better and probably St. Clair's. Well, then on the radio came tomorrow's forecast. Should be half cold, but a touch overcast. Nice day tomorrow, Uncle John, you agree? Well, he stood up and he looked out the window to see. Weather, don't be talking. Sure, one day there's rain and the next day there's snow. And with frost on the ground, me taties can't grow. And the crowd on the radio, sure, they're always wrong. Sure, they couldn't even forecast, but sent you by fog. If the weather is miserable, there's never no good. Sure, I can hardly get out and cleave up me wood. And I can't check me slips, cause it's wet and it's cold. And I can't hook me mouse, cause he tells me I'm old. So I'll stay in the house now till the weather comes fine. And I suppose I'll get out again for I dies. Well, sure you will, Uncle John. You looks the best kind. How you feeling these days? You looks pretty spry. How am I feeling? Don't be talking. The gout is right bad, and I got corns on me feet. And I can't say the last time I had a good sleep. And the piles is right bad, not to mention arthritis. And I'm sure I got TB or chronic bronchitis. And my hearing is no good. No more is my sight. And my pants are all shrinking. I think I might need to diet. Well, he continued on with more aches and more pains and ailments that had sent normal men to their graves. Well, it's coming on dark, I said, Uncle John. But I'll be back again before long. Well, thanks for coming, he said, to see Aunt Susan and me. I suppose I'm not too bad for a hundred and three. Well, I guess at his age, this is right to complain. I really can't wait to go see him again. Is me great Uncle John? He's a very fine fella. And if anyone asks, I'll say, let me tell you, great Uncle John, don't be talking. <laughs> oh, come on. I got to pull myself back up here. Bravo. Thank yeah, you yeah, so yeah. much. Well, I think my face is going to be hurting from smiling. <laughs> Ever since I started talking to you, it's just been wonderful. And, of course, I've been watching all your different things and 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 truly bringing a smile to my face and my heart. So I hope everyone Thank enjoyed. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. That is a Newfoundland recitation, everyone. And I know all of us from Newfoundland are familiar, but this show is on the World Wide Web. So if you're not familiar with our culture, that's a big part of it. And when you get to come here again, you can you can enjoy this. You can go see Harry, <laughs> and uh, yeah, some of those stage from stage to stage. I think I said that right from stage to stage. Yes, yeah. So Harry, we've got this book down now. I mean, is there anything else coming up? Are you going to write more books, or what? Does this ever end? Three have been written towards the next book. <laughs> ah. I've got a few started, and I'm I'm working towards something. Yes, uh, and hopefully, if uh, if all turns out well, there there will be a second one. I I can't give you a timeline. It took it it feels like it took ten years to do this one, but uh, but that's only because I didn't have a goal at the time. I was just writing and having fun. Right. So maybe well, now that I have a goal, I don't imagine it'll be ten years. No, it probably won't. And I think the inspiration will come to you. I mean, we're not short of ideas here. And is it running in the family? Did I? run across the fact that your daughter is doing some of this as well, one of your children? Maybe. she. Uh, <laughs> a couple of years ago, she, uh, my youngest daughter, uh, uh, we were doing a, uh, a folk festival. Uh, I, I was doing a folk festival, and uh, one of the guys said, uh, we're going to do something called transmission lines, which is basically, you know, from, passed along from, say, generation to generation, a, a tradition. And uh, I said, oh, so I guess you mean uh, myself and Uncle Moe's. And he said, no, I was hoping your daughter might do something. I said, well, let's check that out and see. So I, I, I managed to coerce her into it, uh, but she really enjoyed it. And uh, she especially liked that little check that she got at the end as well. So, Oh, there how nice. Go. How nice. And, and who knows? I mean, when we grow up in these environments, we're strongly influenced by them. I think that's why Newfoundlanders are such great storytellers. And uh, where do people find you? I, I, I'm, I'm actually, I don't have. I have your Facebook here. I know you're on Facebook, but are you going to be performing anywhere around the province this summer? Right now, that's kind of up in the air, thanks to our lovely friend mm. COVID. Uh, yeah, but. Um, there is talks of somewhere uh, on the West Coast, but I, I have no information. But 
if you follow the uh, my uh, they, author page, it will certainly be there. Yeah, so well, we'll the and so that would be your 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 Facebook page here that I put up. That's Is my that Facebook your... author page. Okay. There, yeah. All right. So I'm sure yeah. we can find that and keep in touch. And um, so now this is not what you do for a full time living, of course. I don't. I don't think at this point that uh, it would probably sustain you. But what what do you do in real life, Harry? Well, I'm, uh, I work in sales at a, a rigging shop, Extreme East Rigging, uh, just making making lifting gear. So if you're if you're passing by a marina and you see a boat being lifted out of the water, there's a good chance that's uh, uh, of some of our product that's lifting that. So well, there you go. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a <laughs> everything I talk to you about. I keep going. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a recitation in that. <laughs> the biggest boat we ever lifted that ever came to Newfoundland. <laughs> there are oh recitations goodness. in anything. In anything, and um, are there have in the past have there been a lot of festivals around around the province? Uh, the main one, I guess, would be the um, the Newfoundland Labrador Folk Festival in Bannerman Park. Uh, that's been a staple one, as well as uh, uh, the St. John's Storytelling Festival. So that, that would be a couple to certainly watch out for. And I believe the festival, thankfully, is going ahead this year. It's being spread over four nights. So it can be uh, and, and have so many people at, per night. So uh, that's going to be a real treat as well. So I'm not sure if I'm a part of that yet. I haven't been approached, but uh, I have been for the past few years. So I'm, uh, I'm hoping for a call. Fingers crossed for you, Harry. I think I think you'd be missed if you weren't there for sure. I'll, I'll vote. I'll put in a vote for you now. So yeah. <laughs> we'll keep up the writing. And thank you so much for sharing the information on recitations. And uh, um, I guess when we think when we think of this, it's part of our culture, but it probably came over from the old country at one point. And uh, and but we are let's let's say maybe we're the standard now here in Newfoundland due to people like you who are making it happen and come alive and writing amazing books. Thank, thank you, you so much. thank you so much, Harry, for your time. And I invite everyone to check out his book. And also, uh, thank you for watching. Let's get writing. There are so many shows on my YouTube channel, and actually, Harry's going to be on there as well, doing more reading. So be sure to check it out. And thank you again for watching Let's Get Writing. Bye, everyone, and bye, Harry. Thank you.